Dorchester County's history was shaped by its isolation from the rest of the world. The waters of the Chesapeake Bay, Choptank, and Nanticoke Rivers produced food for the Indians and colonists of this beautiful country. Its historic contribution was by no means insignificant. William Halleck, a native of Dorchester, commanded the Wasp, one of the first two ships of the Continental Navy, and John Tripp, another native, was one of the heroes of the War of Tripoli. Four U.S. Navy ships were named in his honor. His uncle, Captain Edward Tripp, constructed the first steamboat on the Chesapeake Bay in 1813. While Dorchester County records no great battles of the Civil War, it was the center of conflict of the Oyster Wars. Following the Civil War, fierce battles emerged between the states of Maryland and Virginia over the harvesting of the Bay's abundant oysters. Watermen fought hand-to-hand -hand with shotguns and rifles and used their boats as ramming devices. The battle continued through the early 20th century between the Watermen and Maryland Fisheries Police armed with water-cooled machine guns. There were many Dorchester natives who made international contributions, including Harriet Tubman. Annie Oakley liked the area so well she built a home here. You'll find more information at the Brannock Maritime Museum, where there's an astonishing archive of naval and Chesapeake Bay history, surveys and documents, including over 8,000 photographs. Hi, I'm Connie Tubman. Welcome to Bay Country Shop. We have hand-carved decoys, waterfowl, and skipjacks, all done by local artists. We have original paintings and prints of the Eastern Shore, hand-painted and embroidery clothing. We also have books about Dorchester County and many gift items local to the area, including jewelry. We have a lot of horse and dog items and timeless clothing. Everyone who works here is family and we all do the buying. We look forward to seeing you. We're standing in an area known as Long Wharf, the perfect place to start a walking tour of historic Cambridge. Cambridge, one of the oldest cities in the state of Maryland, was settled in 1684. The Stone Fountain is a memorial to the residents who lost their lives in World War I. It is operational during the warm weather months. Behind the fountain, you'll find the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, a false smokestack that was used aboard the presidential yacht as an elevator for the president. We're here in downtown Cambridge, which has a very interesting background. As Cambridge developed into a thriving seaport community in the 1700s, it attracted many merchants to downtown. Ray Street became the center of a thriving business district until its decline in the 60s and 70s to shopping centers. The new century brought a revitalization to downtown, with enthusiastic shop owners restoring the buildings back to its original historic integrity. You can witness this revitalization for yourself as you browse through many independently owned shops. You can find just about anything here. You can find... Hello, this is Joie de Vivre Gallery. We have fine art, pottery, sculptures, designer jewelry, wearable art, with a high concentration on American artists. Chocolates, cheeses, wines, and brown paper packages tied up with string. Here are a few of my favorite things in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Long Wharf meets historic High Street, a brick-paved, tree-lined street, home to many 18th and 19th century dwellings, some that were actually moved to this location from across the bay. A historic walking tour brochure is available at the Visitor Center to describe the many homes in detail. Along historic High Street is the Dorchester Art Center, open 10 to 2 Monday through Saturday. The Art Center is a gallery for local artists and features changing exhibitions throughout the year. Situated on the corner of Church and High Streets is Christ Church. Originally built in 1693 and rebuilt a final time in 1883, it is an excellent example of American Gothic Revival architecture. Many noteworthy graves, including early settlers, revolutionary and Civil War heroes, and five Maryland governors are located behind the brick-walled fence. A court was established in Cambridge about 1695. The building was destroyed by fire, and this one was designed and built in 1770. Dorchester County is also home to the Richardson Maritime Museum, dedicated to the shipbuilding trade of the area, as well as master shipbuilder James B. Richardson. The museum features the rich heritage of the waterways of Dorchester County and includes a model of the Nathan of Dorchester, an authentic skipjack built by local volunteers to preserve the technique of wooden boat building. The Dorchester County Historical Society at 902 LaGrange Avenue features an exhibit on seven Maryland governors and 19th century transportation exhibits. Harriet Tubman, often called the Moses of her people because of her work in the Underground Railroad freeing slaves, was born in Dorchester County in an area called Bucktown. A slave herself, Harriet ran away only to return to Delmarva 19 times to free 300 others. During the Civil War, she served the Union Army as nurse, scout, and spy. 
The Spokont Windmill Complex, located seven miles west of Cambridge, is the only fully operational English-style post windmill in Maryland. Once a self-contained community, Spokont today has the only existing post windmill for grinding grain in Maryland. Also on the property is a tenant farmhouse, a one-room schoolhouse built in 1870. Under fair winds, the mill is still operated from time to time. Dorchester County is the largest county in the state of Maryland. Included in the county are Hooper Island, Taylor Island, and Elliott's Island. These areas are well known for their seafood trade. Many families still make their living on the waterways of Dorchester County. You could plan a drive to one of these islands near the day's end for a memorable ride along ribbons of road winding through marshlands and water, sets that surround you in breathtaking color. As you make your way around the county, you'll pass through many small communities and quaint villages such as Vienna, one of the oldest settlements in the county. Located on the Nanticoke River, it has its original customs house, a new waterfront park, and boardwalk along the river. East New Market is a town which was entered in its entirety on the National Register of Historic Places in 1975. Curiously, it has a church standing at each of its four entrance routes. Perlock, a strong agricultural community, is also known for its rich railroad heritage and renovated train station. Secretary, which was once an active seaport community, maintains its charm in North Dorchester. And Church Creek, a community developed around the creek of the same name, is home to Old Trinity Church. This structure is the oldest Episcopal church in continuous use in the United States. Anna Ella Carroll, the unnamed general of the Civil War and the unrecognized cabinet member to Abe Lincoln, is buried in the church's picturesque cemetery. Cambridge and Dorchester County are home to many other attractions, including Brooks Barrel Company, manufacturer of slack cooperage. It's the only one in the state of Maryland, and tours are available by appointment. The Visitor Center at Sailwinds Park is the best place to start your tour of the county. Outside the center, you'll find everybody's play space, clean and comfortable restrooms, the Grand National Waterfowl Monument, gardens of native plants, and a boardwalk along the beautiful Choptank River. We hope that you enjoyed your stay here in Dorchester County and make plans to come back again and again. We hope that you do enjoy the heart of Chesapeake Country. The age-old way of catching oysters here in the Chesapeake Bay were by, is by tongs. And uh, they say the Indians called them that way and they're still using them. And, uh, uh, it, it seems like to be a, a good way to catch them because that way you never deplete the uh, oyster beds. Uh, they, they make a living uh, and it's, it's the hardcore people that do that. The watermen are hardcore, they have to face the elements. They go out when it's freezing and blowing and snowing and uh, that's the time that the oysters bring the most money. In the winter, everybody wants to eat oysters in the winter so you have to gather them when you can. They use the tongs, it's like two sticks, and they're crossed in the middle, and they have a rake on each end, and they pull them together like that, and then they lift them up on the boat, and they dump them on the boat, and then they have to cull through them. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard way to make a living, really hard. I heard one guy say, anybody said he likes doing that is a liar, but, <laughs> but it is a really hard way to make a living, but it, 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 it's, uh, people do make a living, they make very good livings out of it. Uh, and it, also there's another way called patentong, and that is limited to the Bay Area. That is a hydraulic, great big rig, a hydraulic, and, and you drop it in the water, and then you pull your lever of the hydraulics, pulls them together, and it brings it, a, a lot of oysters up and dumps it like that. There's a few people do, that do that, not a lot of people. Most people do by hand tongs. There's also another way, the skipjacks, the dredge boats. Uh, they have to dredge by sail four days a week. Monday and Tuesday they can use power and uh, they, on those days they catch more oysters but at, on the skipjacks they drag their dredges behind them and drag over the bottom for a half a mile at a time and when they pull it up it's fu full of real big beautiful oysters and they dump it on the deck. My name is Maggie Briggs and I'm an outdoor recreation planner here at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which is part of the Fish and Wildlife Service under the Department of Interior. Blackwater is one of the best places in Dorchester County to see a lot of different types of wildlife. The refuge has a visitor center, which has lots of exhibits. 
there is a wildlife drive that's approximately three and a half miles long. It is open every day from dawn until dusk. There are two hiking trails that are along the wildlife drive. One's about a third of a mile long, is wheelchair accessible. There are lots of different types of wildlife to see all year round. Blackwater is the best place on the eastern coast, north of Florida, to see nesting eagles. Last year we had approximately 89 young eagles hatched. There are 50 to 100 eagles here year round, and almost any time of the year that you come to the refuge, you're more than likely to see an eagle.